Hello, welcome to this tutorial. In this video, we are going to simulate ECAP process using Abacus FEA software. Uh, first of all, ECAP, which stands for Equal Channel Angular Pressing, is a processing method in which a metal is subjected to an intense plastic straining through simple shear without any corresponding change in the cross-sectional dimensions of the sample. So ECAP, which is also called Equal Channel Angular Extrusion, is a technique from the severe plastic deformation group used for producing ultra-fine grain material. This technique is able to refine the microstructure of metals and alloys, and as a result, improving their strengths. As you can see in the picture, the simulation consists of three main parts. The first one is die, the second one is plunger, and the third one is, ter uh, is test material or the sample. The plunger forces the test material to move inside an L-shaped pass through the die, and this will cause the test material to experience severe uh, deformations and uh, grain uh, and the microstructure of this sample will be refined. As you can see in this picture too, the plunger is forcing the sample to move through an L-shaped uh, pass inside a die, and the pressed sample is out here. Uh, the pass angle should not always be 90 degrees and can be a variable angles to such as 18, 17, or more than 19. But in this simulation, we are assuming the pass to be completely L-shaped. Uh, here are the dimensions we are using. As you can see, we are only modeling half of the uh, whole process. Uh, I mean, half of the geometry of the whole process, because this, this will cause the calculation and the cost of this simulation to decrease uh, and uh, the time of the and the speed of the simulation increases. Uh, so first of all, we, we are going to model the parts one by one in Abacus. Uh, the first part is die. So uh, I consider the die as a 3D discrete rigid uh, solid extrusion uh, part. And uh, as you can see, uh, the biggest dimension of the die is 0.1. Meter. So, uh, in the approximate size, I can <clears throat> insert uh, the twice much dimension, I mean 0.2, so all the mm, model can fit in the grid line. Okay, this is the grid line created. First of all, I want to create a queue. Uh, it is 0.1. And the other is equal to this. Okay. Uh, depth of this mm, cube is 0.05. Uh, okay. Now the cube is created, but the die is not complete. I should create a sweep, sweep cut through this die to make my L-shaped pattern. So I go to uh, sweep cut. First, the pass should be created. So I create an edit sketch. Uh, the plane is here and the vertical axis on the right is here. The L-shaped pass consists of, a, of two lines like this, which the first line is 0.03 far from this line and the same with this line. Okay, I will give it a fillet equal to 0.01 radius and the fillet is located in here. Done. The pass is created and the direction is true. It is correct. Uh, next. I should uh, sketch the profile. Uh, this is the 
profile thing. Uh, my profile is a circle with radius of 0.01. Done. Okay, my profile and pass is created, and I should uh, create my cut sweep. Uh, uh, the next component is the plunger. So we create another part, we name it plunger. It's a the 3D discrete rigid solid extrusion part approximate size let's be 0.2 uh, my plunger is going to be half of a circle so I will create this circle this line the radius of this circle is 0.01 I want to trim these parts. Okay. And the depth of this part is 0.01 again. Done. Okay, this is my plunger. Uh, do not forget each of the discrete rigid parts or uh, you make, you have to assign a reference point to it. Uh, I will do it later. Let me create my other part, which is a uh, sample. Sample. Okay, a sample is a 3D deformable solid extrusion part, and its diameter is again like this. Trim this part, and the radius is 0.01, and the depth is 0.05. Okay, this is my uh, sample. Uh, before I forget this, let me go to my plunger. First of all, I have to make it a uh, shell, so I go to shape shell from solid select cells to be removed done and i will assign a reference point to this plunger i want my reference point to be features uh, i want my reference point to be here okay i do the same for die because it's another discrete rigid part so first of all shape shell from solid, selecting the cell, done, and assigning a reference point to it. So it's not very important to me. I want this to be here. Okay, uh, next we go to property module to create our material property. So we have uh, our material uh, and uh, as you know, uh, I'm using SI metric dimensions. So uh, my length is, it's not bad to write here. My length is in meter. My uh, force is in force. Newton. And so my pressure or strain, stress, is in Pascals. Uh, the density is in kilograms per cubic meter, and so on. These are the most important ones. Uh, okay, so first of all, my density, it's equal to 2,700 kilogram per cubic meter. My elasticity, elastic, and Young's modulus is equal to 70 gigapascals. And Poisson ratio is 0 0.35. 
Next, I should define my plastic behavior. Uh, I have the plastic behavior of this material here. This is the true plastic stress and logarithmic plastic strength. So if you want to insert this data, you can just pause the video right here. Uh, I'm going to write this one by one. Uh, but first, let me correct this mistake. It must be 696. OK, this is the data uh, we are going to use as our plastic data. OK, I have inserted my plastic data, as you can see, uh, based on this uh, table. Uh, the next move uh, is to OK. Uh, create a section, section one, a homogeneous, continue material one, okay. And I want to assign this section to my sample. Creating set, done. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to my assembly module and insert the parts I have created. I want to my instances to be dependent and auto offset. Okay. <clears throat> Let me see. Where's my. I want to move my die into the origin of my. My. Uh, coordinate systems origin oh, sorry i want to move my guide from here to here okay then is my sample which i want to be in this place so i will use uh, coincidental this co uh, constraint coaxial so I use this surface and this surface okay then I will move this part here here okay my sample is in its place and then is my plunger's turn so I use coaxial between these two. I want my reference point to be an upward. So uh, in this situation, when these two flashes, these two arrows are in uh, this direction, the uh, abacus will rotate my plunger in a way that these two arrows be on a, uh, on a same direction. So uh, at that point, it, my reference point will be on the bottom side of my plunger. So I will I do click flip and then OK. So now my reference point is uh, on the upside of my plunger. So then I want to use the face-to-face -face constraint. Uh, I use this uh, constraint between uh, my dies, this face, and my plunger. So the face I want to choose is not choosable right now in this. Uh, so I want to temporarily remove my uh, die and <clears throat> so I can, I'm able to choose the face I want. Uh, the second face is this one. So, yeah, I want to arrows be like this, and then okay. Uh, let me again define this. On this plane, and then the Data plane is my yeah okay 
Okay. Okay. Now, as you can see, my uh, plunger is in the right orientation and direction, but I just want to move it on the top of my sample. So, again, I will disappear my die so I'm able to choose my plunger. Okay. I want to this point to come here. Okay. Done. Done. Uh, next, we go to a step module and we create a new step. The step is dynamic explicit. Uh, the NL geometry is on and the time period is set to 0.5. I use mass scaling by factor of 100. Okay, uh, because we have severe material deformation, our elements will experience severe distortions in which it will cause problems in solving. So for eliminating this problem, we will use ALE meshing theory. First of all, let me give you a short introduction to ALE meshing theory. ALE, which stands for Arbitrary Lagrangian Eulerian Adaptive Meshing, allows you to maintain a high quality mesh throughout an analysis. Uh, even when large deformations or losses of material occur, by allowing the mesh to move independently of the material, adaptive meshing moves only nodes. The mesh topology remains unchanged. Adaptive meshing is available only for coupled temp displacement, dynamic explicit, dynamic temp displacement, explicit, soils, and static general steps. Uh, this is the definition of ALE meshing theory by the abacus documentation itself. So uh, we create a, an ALE meshing theory by, we go to tools, uh, sorry, we go to other ALE adaptive meshing domain and uh, edit step one. Okay. Uh, in here, in this window, we, we use uh, the ALE adaptive mesh domain below. Uh, we select the region, which is our sample. Okay. Uh, in here, ALE adaptive mesh control, we create a mesh control, we name it ADA1. Okay, we let the uh, defaults to be the same as it is. Okay. And the frequency, we set it to 5, remeshing sweep per increment to 3. Okay. Our ALE adaptive meshing theory is defined. Uh, next, we go to interaction and we create a, an interaction property. We want to be contact, mechanical, tangential behavior, and we use friction coefficient of 0 0.08. Okay. And we will create an interaction well, uh, I want to be general contact and with this interaction property. Okay. So next we go to load module. Uh, here I want to define my loads and my the boundary conditions. First of all, my uh, die should be assumed as in caster. So I use this reference point and I will fix it with ncaster constraint. Okay. Then I want to uh, give the symmetric uh, constraint to my, <clears throat> or symmetric boundary condition to my sample. Because the normal vector of symmetric plan is in 
uh, z direction, as you can see, the normal vector of my symmetric plan, which is this plan, is in z direction. So I will create boundary condition, symmetry, continue. I choose this plane and z -sim. Okay. And then I should define my uh, plunger's uh, displacement. So uh, I create again boundary condition, displacement rotation, continue. I choose this reference point and I will give it a negative 0 0.05 in the y direction or in y direction, in my vertical direction. Okay, uh, but before that, I should, because my step is explicit, I should define an amplitude. So I create amp1 tabular. Uh, oh, zero. And one. Okay, let this be simple. Mm. I have not chose this amplitude. Okay. Uh, uh, so next is mesh module, but before that, uh, the plunger is only uh, able to move on the vertical direction. So for assigning that, I go to boundary condition manager, click on BC3, which is related to my plunger, and edit. Uh, I should set other degrees of freedom to zero. So u1, u3, ur1, ur2, and ur3. Okay, now my plunger is constrained to move only on the vertical direction. Next, we go to mesh module and click on part and start by meshing our sample. First, we click on C part. Uh, approximate global size is set to 0 0.001. Okay. Uh, assign mesh control. Element shape hex, sweep, medial axis. Okay. Uh, assigning element type. Uh, element library should be an explicit because our step is dynamic explicit. Uh, geometric order linear and I use enhance hourglass control. Okay, and then mesh part. Yes. Uh, 8,750 elements have been generated on part sample. Uh, uh, next part is the plunger. Okay, uh, global size is set to 0.0022. Okay. Mm, assign mesh control to this region. Uh, quad, free, and medial axis. Okay. Uh, assigning element type. Standard, explicit. Okay, done. And then, uh, next part is the die. Uh, for meshing this part, I'm going to use uh, this feature, seed edges, and I'm going to use the bias form uh, to seed the edges of my uh, die. This will um, and give me uh, the ability to concentrate in some regions which are more important to me and to my simulation. Uh, as you know, here is the place where the uh, sample will uh, experience the most uh, stress and uh, deformation and distortions in all the elements. So. Uh, I want the elements in these regions to be very, very uh, precise and to be very, very uh, small elements so my simulation can be uh, solved and run. 
So first of all, I will choose C part and global size is set to 0.002. Okay, this is the global C part, but in some places I want my elements to be more concentrated. So I use this feature, seed edges. I choose this edge and this edge. Done. Uh, I use the bias, single bias form. And by number, uh, number of elements I want to be on these two edges is equal to 15, 50 elements and bias ratio is set to 20. Uh, as you can see, these arrows show the directions of bias. This direction is true because I want my uh, concentration to be in this direction. I mean, I mean, most of the elements are here. But this direction is not true. So I click on flip bias. Uh, I choose this edge and done. Okay, the arrow has changed and now both of the directions are true. Okay. As you can see, it has made too many seeds on this edge. And by moving on these directions, uh, the concentration of my elements and my seeds uh, are increasing. Next, I choose these two uh, edges. Done. And uh, I don't want any bias for this. I choose number of elements equal to 40. 40 elements, okay, uh, done. Then I go to uh, my assign mesh control. I choose this here. Uh, it should be quad middle axis, okay and assigning element type done standard explicit okay then mesh part yes okay uh, 18695 uh, 18, elements have been generated on my die part and as you can see the concentration is in this region which is very pleasant to me uh, so next is uh, our job module, and we should create a job. So first of all, I create a job model one uh, because I want to. Uh, I want my simulation to be done faster. I I use parallelization, so I want to use multiple processors. I use four processor. Uh, and the job is created. I can submit and uh, run this job, but first let me do a data check. Uh, let me rename it as job two. Okay, data check. Now the check, data check is being uh, run. Uh, but uh, as we as you remember, uh, we've done uh, mass scaling by the factor of 100. But, okay, the data check completed successfully, so there's no problem to run this model. But uh, because the speed of this uh, simulation is much more important to me, and I don't want to put my CPUs uh, onto so much pressure to do all the calculations, uh, I want to increase my uh, mass scaling factor uh, and increase it to uh, let me edit this to 10,000. Okay, this will decrease the accuracy of my simulation, but this is not very important to me right now. I just want my model to be uh, run and simulated and I want to see uh, I, I just want to see the process. I, it is not very important to me. The accuracy is not very important to me. Okay, let me check this once more. Okay, 10,000 is okay. And then I want to run the job again. Uh, I click on submit 
and you will see uh, the result after the job is done. Okay. okay, after the job is completed, you can go to visualization module and see the results. As you can see, the orientation in this uh, assembly is different, but the other parameters are exactly the same as what we did uh, through this video. Uh, but I just had done this ECAP process uh, some weeks ago, and I didn't want to rerun my model. Uh, I just, uh, I'm just showing you the results of this uh, process. All the other uh, parameters are the same, uh, but the orientation, which is different. The L-shaped path is uh, kind of mirroring, mirrored in here. Uh, okay, uh, we can click on deformed shape and the uh, final deformed shape is like this. And if you want to see the video, uh, the animation, this is the animation. Uh, this is the ECAP process. As you can see, the plunger is forcing the test material into an L-shaped pass, and the um, mice uh, stresses are shown. If you want to see the complete uh, form of this material test, uh, you can go to, uh, first of all, you should create a coordinate system. Uh, CYS1, fixed system, rectangular, OK. Uh, select a point here on this plane. Uh, I am selecting this point, OK. Uh, to bring X, Y plane, uh, OK. Uh, the coordinate system is created, as you can see. But I think it is kind of uh, oriented, oriented, orientated. So uh, first of all, I delete this coordinate system. I create a new fixed coordinate system. One uh, point to be an x axis. It wants the point to be an x axis. Okay, this point is true. On x equal plane, uh, this point is true. Now it is not oriented anymore. Okay, then we go to uh, viewport, view ODB, display options, mirror pattern, and mirror CS, mirror uh, coordinate system is this one which we created and the mirror plane is set to this plane i mean this plane which is x equal plane okay apply now the model has uh, mirrored so i just want to see my sample so i just want to delete or delete other instances in here part instances i just want my uh billet uh, in, in this model i've named it as billet or the sample uh, i want to replace just this billet replace okay as you can see this is my billet uh, and the final form is like this uh, okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I tried to um, explain all the steps, uh, all the steps I go and all the you know, parameters I choose. Uh, so I hope you can uh, run this um, simulation step by step as what I said. Uh, again, you know, just as what I said. And uh, if you have any trouble, uh, just let me know in the comments, uh, and uh, I would appreciate it if you like and subscribe our channel for more um, videos like this, more tutorials of Abacus and uh, maybe even uh, other applications. Thank you very much. Have a good time. Goodbye.